We're often told that moving your queen too early goes against opening principles and is bad and you shouldn't do it. However, sometimes when your opponent does it, it can be a little bit daunting as the queen is the most powerful piece on the board and threats can just appear out of nowhere. For example, after something like this and on move two, your opponent may already confuse you with something like this. This isn't opening theory or anything. And in fact, it's called the wayward queen attack because... This queen is just in the middle of nowhere. It's on the edge of the board. It's already moved all the way out here. Move two. It can be a bit confusing. What do you do in this position? Well, there are a few things you can do, but what you shouldn't do is play a random move like this. Panic and play a random move because that's just checkmate. So don't do that because if you do this against me, you will get clipped. You will get put into a short and just don't do it. Just don't ever do that. I mean, not that any of you guys would, play king e7 on move two for some random reason. Um, but yeah, don't do that. Another thing that you shouldn't do um, is panic and go, oh my God, I need to attack the queen. It looks like it's a good move. Um, however, it isn't because again, the queen takes e5 just, well, it's check to begin with. And if you do something like, I don't know, trying to protect yourself against the check, well, there is the game pretty much you're a rook down on move four and you can already resign pretty much. So don't do that either. So what can you do? What should you do? Well, the first thing you should do after any move your opponent ever makes is think, what was the purpose behind that move? What is the threat? And the threat you may be able to have seen by now is taking this pawn. This pawn is hanging. This pawn is being attacked and it's not being defended. So your opponent can take this pawn next move if you don't defend it. So you should think, well, I need to defend this pawn. So how do you do that? Well, you can't do this because it's pinned. So don't try and do that. Um, you can come queen here. That seems like a normal move and it's fine. Uh, it does block in this bishop though. And this knight, maybe it wanted to come here as well. So maybe not the best move, but I mean, your opponent has already made a random queen move. You can make a random queen move yourself. Um, but there are better moves. For example, queen here is slightly better. It doesn't suffocate your position quite as much. Your queen has a few more options and this bishop has a nice bit of scope. However, again, it does sort of block in this, this knight. Um, but again, it does protect the pawn, which is the main goal. Um, a move you could play is this, but this bishop just looks a bit weird and there might as well just be a pawn on this square because it's doing absolutely nothing. And in fact, you can put a pawn on this square and defend that pawn. So you could do that. But I think the best move and most logical is to just come here, knight c6, defends the pawn, develops peace. That, that knight should be on c6. That is where that knight should be because that's where it's most active. Um, but your opponent could continue and come here. Now you may say, okay, Simple developing move. Let's, you know, play a simple developing move ourselves. Let's come here. Or maybe even you want to come here. Well, no, because you just got Scholars mated. The reason it's called Scholars Mate is because schoolboys fall for it. And you just... Schoolboy error. Schoolboy error. Don't do that. Again, you need to make sure you are looking at your opponent's moves. What is the threat? What does it attack? It attacks F7. So you need to defend F7. Again, how do you do that? Well, there are a few ways... You can come queen here again. You can come queen here again. Both of those are good moves. Um, but personally, my favorite here is just to come g6. Why? Well, first of all, it attacks the queen. So this queen now is forced to move because your opponent doesn't want to just lose their queen. Well, maybe they do, but once you win a few games, maybe they won't. Um, and so they're forced to move their queen. And it also gives your bishop quite a nice square. That's not how a bishop moves. It gives your bishop quite a nice square. Why? Man. Anyway, it gives your bishop a nice square to have a nice diagonal on in the future. So, yeah, this is my preferred move. Play it if you want. You could play, like I said, any of these moves as long as you protect f7. Um, yeah, so maybe your opponent comes here and again, you want to just develop as you should in the opening, right? Well, wrong, because again, you... Idiot, idiot, don't, don't, come on, come on, you're not even paying attention. you got to uh, pay attention to your opponent's threats. So how do you protect F7? Again, 
You could come queen here. You could come queen here. You could even come f6. But I think, again, the easiest way is to just develop, be, you know, simple chess, just simple moves. And you want to just, yeah, develop, essentially. And this blocks the queen attacking f7. In general, what you should do when your opponent plays random moves is just develop. And if you can stop their threats with um, by developing a piece, then you should, which is what we're doing here. They've got one last trick up their sleeve. Maybe they want to uh, come here to g4. Now, you may say, what is the point of that? Well, maybe we could come here again. And then after this, oh, they're attacking our knights. Wow, let's move our knight and fall for this again because I am... 100 elo no do not do that because you're not 100 elo or at least you don't want to be 100 elo um pay attention to your opponent's threats my face has gone completely white anyway pay attention to your opponent's threats in this position what should you do well that is imminent so you need to make something happen on the board and in general it's not good to move the same piece twice in the opening however your opponent has just you know, played random pawn moves, played their queen randomly twice. So you're allowed to break some uh, a few rules if it means you get some activity out of it. And here in this position, something I would suggest is something like knight to d4, which attacks the queen. And, you know, maybe your opponent moves their queen. Uh, you could take this pawn because that's a free pawn. Or if you're super cool and you know about tactics, you can take this pawn, which is what we call a family fork, which forks all kinds of pieces and your opponent is going to start crying. So yeah, that is that is something cool you could do. Um, essentially, just keep moving your pieces into good places. That is what the opening phase of the game is for. If your opponent doesn't do that, if your opponent keeps moving their pieces onto random squares or keeps moving random pieces or random pawns onto random squares, then you can punish that by simply just developing. The main way to punish these queen moves is to see what threats they have and try and block them with your own pieces while they make random moves with their queen. Because as you can see, all of these pieces here are just, they're in the middle of nowhere. Well, not even in the middle of nowhere. They're on the edge of the board, which is worse than in the middle of nowhere. So yeah, just take advantage of this. As you can see, this bishop is after, okay, maybe something like this protecting here. Maybe you've even got this move, but... Maybe, you know, let's say you, these pawns aren't hanging and you just want to develop. And after something like this and, I don't know, just simple developing moves, um, like, what does your opponent even do? You're very close to finishing development. Um, I know they can just win a pawn here, but you can come here. Just come on, play with me anyway. Yes, so that is that. Also something you could do. If your opponent in a position like this, um, maybe, I don't know, I'm just, again, playing random moves for the sake of playing random moves, uh, castles, and say your opponent tries to protect this pawn, they're just playing really strange random moves. Well, something you should do, another principle on how to punish strange moves, queen moves in the opening, when you are ahead in development, as you are here, your king is safe, your pieces are all nice on good squares, is you should strike out in the center. Now, how do you do this? You do this with pawn breaks. For example, a good pawn break in this position is d5. And after some exchanges like this, well, first of all, your queen is very, very central. It's on a very beautiful square in the middle of the board. It's even attacking this rook. You are one move away from connecting your rooks, which is what you want to do in the opening phase. You want to make sure your king is safe you want to make sure your pieces are on good squares and you want to make sure your rooks are connected because that's how you get activity with your rooks. Meanwhile, look at all of these snoozing pieces. Um, yep, look at all these snoozing pieces that White has. None of their pieces, apart from the queen, which they move on move two, are out. They're all on their starting square, <clears throat> even the king. And this is, if we turn the engine on, I imagine, yeah, Minus four, nearly minus five in favor for black here. And the material is even, which just shows you how bad this position is for white. So yeah, that's essentially it. However, I will also show you 
Um, just going back, how developing your queen can actually be a good thing. For example, there is in an opening I play called the Sicilian Khan, um, which goes a little something like this. Uh, you don't need to memorize these moves at all. Um, but after something like this, it's quite common for the queen to be developed here. Now, why is this theory? In fact, it gives roughly equal in this position still. When I've just told you that it's bad to move your queen out early. This is move, uh, what move is this? Move five. Why is this good? Why is this accepted as a move that you can play? Loads of people have played this. Famous grandmasters, they all play this. Well, the reason this is fine is because you haven't, you know, extended your queen all the way out here. The queen is nice and safe here on a very normal square for the queen to be on. In the Sicilian, the queen often comes here to c7 and it's on a very nice square. It can't even be attacked by these pieces because, well, you can just take them. Um, it can't be attacked here either because, again, you can just take it. Um, yeah, this bishop, it, I mean, it can't come here either to attack. So basically, the queen is safe. Essentially, when people move their queen out randomly, like, um, like I don't know, like here, their queen, this queen is not safe. The opening is literally called the wayward queen. Um, uh, if we go back, it's called the wayward queen because it's in the middle of nowhere. It's, it's just on the edge of the board, nothing near it at all. It can just be attacked. And so, yeah, that is that. Like I said, in this position, the computer even gives something like this. It gives this. All good moves. So, yeah, just remember that for your games. If your opponent starts making random queen moves at you, don't panic. Calm down. Think, what are they trying to do? Try and develop your pieces and neutralize their threats. And if you can, break out in the center to try and crack the position open where you have a development lead and all of their pieces are snoozing on their starting squares, on the back rank while your pieces are nice and active in the middle of the board, taking control of the game. So yes, that is that video. Feel free to subscribe, to like, to uh, all of the other stuff that you do on other people's YouTube videos. Do it on mine, please. Unless you dislike other people's YouTube videos, then don't do that on mine, um, because that would be very sad. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, everyone. See you in the next one. And check out the links in the description. I've forgotten what they are, but just check them out. Just click them, please. Um, yeah. Thank you and goodbye. Mwah.